With us right now, Eric Donovan. Eric, you are the founder and CEO of Paradium, found on the web at paradium.org. And the spelling on that, by the way, is P-A-R-A-D-I-E-M.org. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Gosh, I could not be more excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So from a high level, please do explain what uh, Paradium is. Yeah, so Paradium is a word that we kind of, we took made up Latin word, but it means beyond the day. So what we try and do is help families and business owners think about what's going to happen beyond today. And most people, unfortunately, are spending their lives, you know, just it's Memorial Day just ended, just was at the beach, they're building sandcastles. They think that they're building something that's going to last, and they think that they're building something that's going to make a difference. And unfortunately, when the waves come in and the chaos of life comes in, they find out they focused on the wrong things, and so many times it all gets washed away. I mean, what the greatest thing right now I think we could look at in our lives is look into last year of what's happened to Jeff Bezos. Look at what's going on with Bill Gates. Yeah. I mean, both people wow. that four or five years ago you would have said, me, and those are people I want to be like. Yeah. And they built incredible wealth, but had their eye on the wrong ball. Yeah. So, all right. So we want to, obviously, we, we're, what we what what is it that we want to build then? Yeah. What are we trying to do? What do we want to build? And what we what we found at Paradium is that so many times when we think, okay, when, when I want to build something, where do I go? Well, the place that I go is I go see my advisors and then we go into conference rooms and we sit down and we hash out legal documents and all this other stuff, business plans and all these other things. And what Paradium has done to flip it on its head is said, no, the real conversation starts in your living room. It starts with the people that are most important to you, because as you go to build a business, as you go to build your life, you want the people that are going to be there through thick and thin to stick around, hold you accountable, and make sure that you're really pointing in the right direction. See, what, what the way that we kind of phrase it is when you're building a sandcastle, what you end up with is... It's unintentional manipulation. And what I mean by that is I don't think that the I don't think that the professionals, the attorneys, the CPAs, and everyone else are intending to manipulate what's happening, but the overall industry and everything else is pushing everything towards what am I investing in? What's my return? How am I doing? What's my measurement of what did we make an income last year and everything like that? And totally missing what we call return on intention. Mm. And so am I building the relationships that I want and building the family that I want? You know, so many times we think I just need a little bit more time at work when maybe what you need is a little bit more time at home. Yeah. So, Eric, I, let's say that I, I, you know, I'm sitting down with you and I'm like, all right, Eric, help me out. <laughs> what kind of questions would you ask me? Yeah. So the first type of question is, you know, the, the questions really just begin with, OK, so think about over the next three years, the next five years, the next 10 years. What is it that you really want? And you know, a lot of times what people is they come up with an answer. And what I find is it's the key is not necessarily in the questions. It's in the answers that come out because you could tell me, Hey, well, what I want is a bigger business. And so it's like, well, why, what is that going to give you? And yeah. as you start asking why, and what are you getting and what would that look like? And okay, well, let's, let's say you had that bigger business. How much time would that require of you? Who would you put around you? What would that look like? Would that still give you, so you've got the bigger business. Now you got to be at the office 50 or 60 hours a week. Now you got to do that, you know, start taking them through all the different scenarios of what could come out on the end. And the real big key that we found is the key is not in the, it's, it's in the answers, not the questions. So if we can ask better and better and better questions, you come up with better and better answers that helps you get more and more clarity around what it is you're intending to do. Again, coming that we want intentional, what we call we want intentional transformation. We want yeah. your life to really make a difference. We want to be intentional about it. And we want to ask those questions that come back to the real scope of is what you're going to do really going to get you what you want? And yeah. unfortunately, what I found so much in my life is too many times we stop short with the question. Well, I want to build a big business that grows by 10%. Great. Okay. Here's the business plan that's going to get you to grow 10%. And no one ever stops to ask why they might want to do that or what the consequences of doing that might look like. Yeah. You know, I was just listening to, um, I was just listening to an audiobook. I was riding my bike this weekend. Um, 
it's got an F word in the title, so oh, uh, <laughs> un F yourself. Uh, so forgive me. Uh, but it, that this, you know, is a chapter very specifically on that. You know, how many people say, well, what do you want? Oh, I want a million dollars. No, you don't. Because if you really wanted it, you would do what it takes to get it. But it's not really worth it because of what you'd have to do in order to have that thing. It's is it really worth giving up an extra, you know, 15 hours a week or 20 hours a week uh, to do that work? Do you really want that? Or, you know, uh, you know, it's and and I think it's 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 d also use the term d maddening <laughs> um, to get clarity on what we really want and. Yeah, we say we want it, but we don't really want that because we don't want to, you know, we want to build our life by intention. Um, but it's it's nice to let go of the things that we think we say we want or we think we want. Um, yeah. We really don't. Just let it go. Like, you don't have to be a multi-multi-billionaire in order to have a very fulfilled life. So stop aspiring to that. Right or 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 being out of alignment, I should say, would be the better way of talking about what this is. Right, is uh, saying one thing but doing something different. Let, letting letting those things go. Uh, it's kind of sounds like it's kind of the same thing that what you're talking about. Yeah, and I mean, somebody you say somebody says they want a million dollars. I've had more time than not. What somebody wants is freedom. So they think freedom me equals a million dollars but we stopped at mm. that question well what i want is a million dollars okay well if what you want is a million dollars you go do this 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 and this and the things that get you to the million dollars probably end up tying you down mm. and taking you further away from freedom but you but everyone that you asked said no 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 this is what i need to do to get a million dollars you thought in your mind what you were chasing was a million dollars you never had clarity around what it was you were chasing or why you were chasing it and you ended up catching the wrong thing mm. yeah yeah. Yeah. So um, are there any, what are, what are some good questions that you recommend people ask themselves uh, or, uh, you know, maybe not questions, but, you know, um, processes that they can kind of take themselves to, to, to ask themselves if they're really living in alignment with what they really, really want? Well, I think that the, the, the biggest question is if you had what you're shooting for right now, what would that give you? I mean, that, that's really at its simplest standpoint. If you actually had everything that you have written down on paper, what would you get? I was, I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day and he made the comment. He goes, remember when you wanted what you have right now. <laughs> and so you look at all the stresses and everything. That yeah. goes, here's, every, here's everything I have right now. Cause we're always chasing the next thing. He was like, no, no, no. Remember the day when you wanted wow. what you have right now. And now you complain about all the things that you have. Can you put yourself in the space of going, okay, let's imagine I've actually achieved the goal. What did it, what did it cost me to get here? What did it cost me relationally? What did it cost me in my family? What did it cost me financially? What did it cost me from a time standpoint? What did it maybe cost my health and my body to get here and look at the people around you? I think the other thing that's so hard is can we be honest and real with ourselves and that's why we've kind of found that coaching families through coaching families and businesses through this has been powerful as we see so many families, we'd be like, yeah, that looks nice and shiny. Like go back to Bezos or Gates or any, I mean, any number, those are just the two that are in the headlines right now. But the story is repeated over and over again. Everything on the outside looks shiny and happy. And all we see is the shiny and happy. And what we're trying to paint people through is, okay, if you're really going after that thing, let me tell you about the stories of people who've gone after that thing, yeah. the pitfalls the things that they've fallen into, what's that, what that's meant. And is that really what you want to go after or how you want to go after it? The other thing too, that I think gets to be key. If you can have your focus in the right place and um, really focus on where you want to go and why there might actually be, if you understand your why, let's say you understand you want a million dollars and you know why the path to get there, because you're so clear on the path, on the why may be completely different than the path you're trying to follow right now, but you, you're not clear enough on your why to know the different way to get there. Yeah. 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 You know, I keep thinking about that uh, quote uh, that you just mentioned, you know, remember when, when you wanted what you have right now. And I think there's a lot of us as well, you know, Eric, that we don't, we don't stop um, to, to spend 
enough to be like, we could be grateful, but to be consciously grateful, right? Um, because I think, especially for, you know, those type A overachievers, you know, go, 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 go. Like, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to be creating next. And, you know, I certainly feel like I'm generally grateful, but, you know, taking the time to pause and just say, you know what? Yeah. Like I, I busted my tail to, to, to get here, you know, and, and, and I'm not talking just about business, right? Like the relationship I have with my wife, I, you know, I, I've, we've never been, you know, more, you know, 20, getting on 26 years of marriage. Uh, and we've never, I mean, it's never been as good as it is right now. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. I'm, I, I love being with her, you know, it's, it's, and, and that's, um, that's something to be proud of. Um, and, and, uh, you know, kind of reflect on. Yeah. But I bet that didn't happen accidentally. Yeah, no, no. Right. So, and that's, that's the thing, you know, and we were just kind of talking about recently, we were talking about, you know, I was thinking about early on, you know, you got two people getting into a relationship, usually you're younger, a little bit more self-focused, <laughs> you know, and then you just kind of lean into the other person and, you know, you recognize that, uh, you know, listen, the more I show up for my wife, the more she shows up for me and, and um, it's, it's been, it's been a journey. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very, very grateful that we kind of figured out those first few years, <laughs> few years. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, one of the things that we we work through families with, especially this is a great place to kind of introduce and talk about this a little bit, is the fact, especially in marriages, especially type A personality, mm -hmm. business owner, go, 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 got to go get this, is we don't realize or take the time to recognize who we've married and how to pour into them. And let me tell you a little bit more about what I mean about this, <laughs> is that the type A personality is the fire ready aim guy, right? Maybe maybe you're ready fire aim, but most of the time we're like fire ready aim, right? I mean, but we're not ready aim fire. And you know, a spouse who marries into this, who's like along for the ride, like on the craziest roller coaster ever, that's just sitting in the back, no control over what's going on, no control over how it's going to go. And what I like to say is what you've got is you've got a visionary driven type A personality married to someone who just has a lot of faith and belief in the person that they've married. And one way that we can get sideways, we've got to be really intentional inside of our marriages is recognizing the amount of certainty that we can put into our spouse's lives that helps ease the roller coaster, right? I have known men and women running businesses who've ended up divorced simply because they couldn't provide a level of certainty to the spouse that was in that entrepreneurial relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, when you marry an entrepreneur, man, you get the whole package. <laughs> right? But I mean, it could be as simple as, do we have a regular date night locked out? Yeah. Right? Certainty, yeah, just, right. Yeah. Just put what, certainty what in the relationship. Ways, even if the financial stuff might be a little feast and famine up and down, how can you cement in and provide the stability and certainty in, in, in other ways. That's, yeah. that's brilliant. I like that. Yeah. I mean, what about going on vacation and leaving your phone at home? Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, one of the things that I, I'm just as guilty, you may be guilty of this too, is how many vacations have turned into glorified work trips. Mm. Yeah. That decreases certainty. You add certainty by creating space. Right. And so it's, so many times, like, well, the business can't go on without me. This can't happen. This can't. No, is that really true? And if I live this way, come back to, am I going to end up where I want to end up? Or if I can take this space out and create this certainty, you know, and then you add kids to the equation, that gets even crazier. Yeah. But that's one of the, you, know, you, you kind of asked me how, that's one of the elements is like, how do we help you navigate the life that you're going after to actually make sure you end up with what you, in, what you really intended to have? So you don't end up, you know, you may have heard this phrase too. You spend your life climbing a ladder only to find out it's leaning against the wrong wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Eric, this has been, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Now I, I, you're, you work as a certified financial planner, right? But you also t tell me about the, what the business does like how you engage with clients and yeah so and the majority of our it's a certified financial planner i grew up in the investment and financial planning business but about 12 years ago i met a gentleman who meant who for 30 years had been mentoring families and business owners through this entire concept 
that money is just as relational as it is financial and mm. created a process that we still follow and have built on today to really ask the intentional relationship questions that sit on top of the financial questions because we find that that's different. So the way that we work on a fee-based retainer, mm -hmm. so people come in, pay for consulting. On our staff, we have family consultants who only work on the family side and the, you know, the relational side of what's going on. And then we have people who work on the financial side. And what we found is it's been this beautiful marriage because as you can walk people through a process of, are you really heading in the direction that you think you're going? Are you really going to achieve what you think that you're after? Because I will tell you the majority of the time, most people are not headed where the GPS is off. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, if, they, if there was a GPS on where they intend to go, I'd tell you 85% of the time, most of the people are off. And so if we can help ask them those questions, then our professionals kind of come around them and like, okay, here's a way to re <laughs> recalculate the GPS and get you pointed towards the actual intended outcome that you wanted. And so many times, you know, it's, it's not necessarily huge shifts, but it is taking times, again, putting more certainty in place, doing things that pour into relationships, um, stepping away. I, I was reflecting on this this morning, you know, how many times do I think what I need to do is write one more email when what I really need to do is go for a walk and clear my head? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, listen, we could talk so much about this. Like if you truly want to be like the, in the moments that you need to be on your a game, like if, if you've just been stretching yourself thin, like it's so hard to truly be who you need to be in those moments that really matter. Right. So, you know, you got to have that recovery. You got to take that self-care. You have to invest into your key relationships, your, you know, your emotional wellness, your spiritual wellness, like that's, that's all part of that. And, and, and again, um, you know, just like go, 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 go and work, 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 work. Um, you know, I don't want to show up to those key moments, those key meetings, those key relationships and be at a 70%. I would right. rather, you know, like, the, you know, we're recording this, you know, after a three day weekend and um, man, I didn't do any work, <laughs> you know, I didn't do any work work. I did, you know, plenty of stuff around the home, but man, I spent a lot of time with my wife. I spent a lot of time with my kiddos. We had some special activities that we did together and, I am now so much more present for, you know, clients today and, you know, interview, interview, interviews I've got scheduled this week. Like I, you, Eric, like I show up, like you, you deserve me to be hundred percent present with you, which is why I took the time for me, you know, over the weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, and that's, who's the number one person we neglect is ourselves. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. All, All right, right. So I, Eric, you know, I was, sorry, go ahead, I was on vacation last week. And I didn't do, just like you didn't do any work. I had one of my biggest business revelations in the last six yeah. months, the last day, just sitting on the beach. And like, I watched a wave roll in and I'm like, oh, and I mean, it's six months, mm -hmm. biggest revelation I've had. I mean, how many times are we, we think that we don't have time to do it and what we, we, we don't have time not to do it. Yeah, for sure. All right, Eric Donovan, your website is paradiem.org. That's P-A-R-A-D-I-E-M.org. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, right on that website there, um, I'm sure folks can reach out and connect with you, yeah. grab 15 minutes or so, something like that. Absolutely. That, and then the other thing that I'll offer up is we got what we call six principles of intention. So we didn't get into this today, but they're basically the six driving principles behind how you can be more intentional on the things that you're doing. So if people want to send me an email, eric at paradigm.org, put principle in the tagline, be mm -hmm. happy to send that out to them because that could be just a great resource just to help people understand how can I be more intentional in everything that I'm doing. Awesome. All right, Eric Donovan, thank you again. Founder, CEO of Paradigm on the web at paradigm.org. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Gosh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.